and uh, we're going to talk about the extreme weather warnings and the GMDSS overlay. Uh, so our goal with creating uh, both of these features is to uh, help people make better decisions uh, in their time on the water. Um, it's nothing's ever absolute with weather and we are just trying to help people identify when there are potential uh, threats, you know, uh, weather-wise and, and, and you know, as I say, make better decisions. Um, it's about getting into the tools and using them more. So, and go over to this page here. Where can you see uh, this new information? Everywhere, basically. Um, the warnings will appear in the Predict Wind app and the Predict Wind website. Um, you can use the, the GMDSS overlay will be in there. I'll talk about what GMDSS is in a minute. Um, and, you know, the warnings will show up in the, the daily briefing and the tables. Um, so, and, and the GMDSS will be on any of the maps and you can turn it on and off. So that's in the Predict Wind app and website, which we use when we are uh, at home or, or in uh, Wi-Fi mobile range. Uh, when we go offshore, we use the offshore app. So when we're out of cell phone range, uh, if we want to save data for offline. Uh, we were on a satellite connection. We use the offshore app. Um, really cool that we have uh, these warnings in there and um, and the GMDSS uh, being converted into uh, a visual image is, is really exciting. As I mentioned, uh, you can see these well, uh, warnings in the um, in the Predict Wind website and the Predict Wind app, um, and we have inside the daily briefing, which is uh, really our most simple forecast uh, that you can get if you feel that everything else that, that we do at Predict Wind is is too is too full on, too intense. You don't like digging into all that stuff. The daily briefing is a really great place to go. Um, it's the top of the menu there, and. You know, not only will it give you uh, the, the the weather warnings, but it also averages out the forecasts um, and and just gives you that that simple to read overview. So you can see here that uh, this is this is uh, at home where I am in Auckland, uh, where my um, kids sail this weekend. You can see that we have um, you know, a pretty, a pretty blustery day coming on uh, the Saturday. Um, so they possibly won't be sailing. Uh, because, and, and what, so what we're seeing here is we have our warnings for gusts and we have rain squall. So what would, what would have brought that about? As you can see, if I go over to the tables and I come over here to Saturday and I can see my warnings and we can see the rain and the cape and um, and this, as, as I say, <laughs> I did wonder why those levels were so high. These, are, you know, we have very low levels of Cape here in New Zealand because we're very far south. Um, but we have we have rain and Cape, and so that's how we get the the rain squalls um, and the, the the average between the average wind speed and the gusts is very high. So that's an indicator of of instability. So depending on where you are in the world and what what um, you know what time you know time of the year it is, there is a, a there are a bunch of different features. So, and we are still rolling some of them out. So uh, I think lightning um, is is going uh, live today. Um, so that you know if there's any chance of lightning in your area, uh, the lightning index and the warning will show up. Um, we have a, a fog. Uh, which is also coming in shortly, um, which, you know, some places in the world that is super handy to know. Uh, we're going to have, we have wind chill uh, in the weather routing. We have the wind against current, and then we have a potential for tropical cyclones. So that's an earlier warning, uh, you know, a, a beyond nine day warning uh, of a potential for tropical cyclones in your area. So that's all going to be pretty cool. That's all location-based stuff. So what we're seeing here for our locations, um, wherever we are, we can see that. So, and what the, the, 
the idea of this when you see these warnings, let's go back to our tables, is when you see these warnings is that you have a look and, and see what it is and, and we and understand, go and understand what it is in the forecast that you need to be looking at there. And what I mean by that is it's when it says gusts, I go, okay, let's go and have a look at the wind maps and see what the models are saying. Why does it look so nasty? Uh, you know, what's going on there is, you know, and we can see our rain as well. If I move that forward, you know, we get, we can we can see and start putting all these parameters together. So the, the warning is there for you to go, okay, there's a warning. And then, then you need to go and look at the forecast and understand what it is that it's telling you and, and understand why that's happening. And that's really what we're trying to do here is to get people thinking about what's going on. Yeah, make, make better decisions. So, so you'll see here I'm on the rain map and I've zoomed out and we can start to see um, our GMDSS forecast. I imagine lots of people don't know what that is. It is what it is. It's a bunch of forecasts written by meteorologists uh, for all the different met areas around the world. So if I actually switch screens, I can explain this better. We should be looking at, at the offshore app. What is the GMDSS? So the GMDSS is all of these met areas that you see here. They're all, it's cut up around the world. These, each of these met areas uh, covered by, you know, so for example, here in Australia, it's covered by BOM, uh, Bureau of Meteor Meteorology. Uh, in New Zealand, it's covered by the New Zealand Met Service. Uh, in the US, um, it's covered by NOAA. Uh, you know, over in, in the UK, it's UKMO, UK Met Office. And so all of these different areas around the world are covered by different uh, Met authorities. And so, but it's their responsibility each day to have meteorologists analyze the forecasts and write these text forecasts. So what do these text forecasts look like? So these are what they look like. If you've never looked at a GMDSS forecast before, you can see, <laughs> you read these, and we always recommend that people get these um, when they're sailing offshore. And so if you've never looked at the weather routing that we do or never looked in the offshore app, you would have never seen this. But it's actually this really great piece of information. Um, and it's kind of like when you look at your national um, weather services forecast and they just have the situation and weather warnings. And that's really what this is, but it covers the whole globe and all the different met areas. And so you look at this and you just go, which I do, and I just go, what am I looking at? And trying to work out where all these different areas are and all that sort of thing. And I just go too hard. And so that was why we decided to uh, get a very clever gentleman uh, come in and work for us. And he has uh, done some machine learning uh, of all of these forecasts, learnt all the language, and we can now convert all of these written forecasts into text images. Um, so why is that important? I mean, well, it's important because then we can see it. So if I come back, I'll go click back on my weather routing. And so all of that text that we could see, this is it shown on the map in a, in a visual format. And so what we're doing is we're taking that, that stuff that's written by the meteorologist and we are converting it into these images. It's not easy. Uh, all of the meteorologists use different language around the world they you know they're, they're people they make typos and so it's it's taken a long time for the machine learning to work out what 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 they're saying all the time and to then you know and for us to put this all into um you know and in, into the images you see we, when we look at all our weather models and our forecasts we are just looking at fully computer generated grips or wind maps. Whereas when we get the GMDSS forecasts, we convert them to these text images. And then all of a sudden you have uh, a synopsis over the top, which means that if you're sailing offshore, for instance, that, you know, I've got a huge grip area downloaded here, but normally we would have a much smaller grip area. And we can see all of these areas outside of our um, grip area that could alert us to any potential threats. You know, for example, at, the, at this time of the year, 
um, you know, any uh, lows forming out here and turning into uh, hurricanes like we have here. So, but the idea of this, like the warnings in the uh, in the tables and the daily briefing, is to is to is to is for you to go. Okay, what's going on here? What do I need to look at? While we were while we are here, we want to look at uh, weather routing. Okay, so for each model, I can see that there's I can change through the models, and I can see that there's you know warnings in different places. You can see this model here with the PWG. We've gone uh, quite a different route, and we've got these different warnings here. Um, if I close that, I can see what the warning is for. Uh, it's vertical acceleration and vertical acceleration and roll. And I can see here that it's for this part of the journey, that it's warning me about that. So what I would do then is I would come over here to my tables and I'm a big fan of the graphs for the vertical acceleration and scroll down here and I can see my wave heights, my wave direction, uh, wave period. Um, if I scroll down a bit further and here's my roll. And so you can see here that the roll has gone above four degrees um, RMS. So it's not four degrees of roll, it's uh, the root mean square. And we, just, we don't really need to worry too much about uh, what that is. It's just that it's a measurement level. So four degrees, we've gone above that. And so it's triggered our warning. Um, and vertical acceleration, it's gone above 0.2. So it's triggered our warning. So we wouldn't, uh, this would be a, a very unpleasant passage. So we might not, we might uh, have not started our passage at this time. We could have done that, looked at this in, in uh, departure planning and chosen not to take this passage, or we could take measures to avoid it. We could let that, uh, that low pressure system that we can see there, we, we could let that go in front of us. Uh, you know, we could hove too, that may not be that comfortable, but it might be better than sailing into this uh, nasty weather. The other very cool thing that we can look at here is if I look at the, um, you know, we know that around the 30th of September that our vertical acceleration and our uh, roll go right up. I can come in here and I can have a look at the wind wave and I can see the direction uh, for the wind wave. I can look at the primary swell and I can see that that's primary swell and the wind wave in different directions and secondary tertiary and you know start to get a picture of why it's going to get really nasty you can see here we also have our our warnings show up in our tables um, and along the route as well you can see that our warnings show up i can click on one of those and it tells me what it's for so as we mentioned at the start, these warnings are about making people go and have a look at what it is that we're triggering the warning for, because we really want people to make better decisions when they're out on the water or, or before leaving. So maybe don't leave. So, yeah, as I mentioned, we can go through all of the different models and we can have everything on there. Um, if I just zoom out. So if we didn't want to uh, look at that, look at the GMDSS anymore, we can just turn it off. Um, I can close that. And so therefore it's not on our map. So I just that's in the same place where I changed my uh, models. I can turn it on and off. We do have some, um, you know, that we're going to keep uh, developing this feature. And you should be able to see the the. I mean, you can read in the text when we when you click on a feature where the um you know say where a top tropical depression or hurricane is moving to, uh, but we're hopefully we'll be able to read that from the forecast and show that on the map as they're moving. Um, so can so I'm going to stop sharing there and jump on another screen. And we will come over here and go up to Miami, where we do have a very nasty hurricane at the moment. We're on a rain map, and we can see uh, the GMDSS 
forecast is telling us that it's uh, the, this hurricane and that it's heading that direction. And then we can look at our weather models and we can see where they think it's going to move to. Um, but you've been able to see this in this warning uh, as this hurricanes move through. So the point here is that we know uh, that there's there's something to be looking for. And, um, you know, th there's been a lot of warning for this. Obviously, hurricanes are notoriously difficult to predict uh, their path, um, but that's why we keep look. that's why we have lots of uh, weather models to compare um, and also why we have this, uh, have introduced these warnings and this GMDSS. So if we come down here, we can actually see the warning. So before we had this visual thing, this is the, the warning we would have had um, for what we can see on the map. And so you'll see that it's the, the speed that it um, is moving at, the winds, you know, 135 to 165. So this is why we want to have this, because we know that the the none of the weather models, like ECMWF is the best uh, weather model in the world for predicting um, path of hurricanes, and, and but none of them are really going to um, put the, get the strengths right in the models once it gets up to those really high levels they just it goes out of their sort of their physical parameters um, and so that's why we it's great to be able to read what the meteorologists have written and where they think it's going and and, and what it's doing so pretty cool that we uh, have that um, even if it is not something we like to see so <laughs> you'll see here we have all these other fronts and um, troughs and whatnot on the map. So if you want to know what any of these are, we do have some really good uh, tutorials. And so all of the stuff that I've just gone through are in these tutorials. I'm sure that the team's probably already shared them um, in, the, in the chat. But it's probably good to have this open, uh, to go and look at your weather maps, and and go and and work out what all these um, parameters are. So and what it is that we are using uh, as our parameters to trigger these warnings. Just because there's a warning not there doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't be analysing your forecast carefully. Uh, they are just a, a, a you know a, something to make you uh, go and look more closely. And so you can see here that we have uh, a little. Uh, explanation on how they're made which is somewhat like the video that we looked at at the start and then what these um, features are and what they mean so that you know there's your front there's your ridge there's your trough so and then what uh, you know what constitutes a gale storm uh, and cyclone strength so yeah here we are in the um, the predict wind forecast website so this is the same as the predict wind app um, this so and you can see this on any map so we're on a rain map if I go to a wind map it's still there if I want to turn it on or off as I just click on that that weather model button I'll just close that this this up here I click on that and I can turn it off and then I can turn it on um so that is in there um my lights are flashing at me uh so that's that's how you see the the GMDSS in the um, in the Predict Wind app or um, or website, and then if I do uh, another share, I'll go back to the offshore app. In the offshore app, and this is probably the more important one, is that whatever uh, grid area I select. So if I um, for anyone that's used the weather routing, uh, if I move this around. Um, I can move my start or finish waypoint and I can come over here to the grib area and I can move this grib area. So that would be the grib area that I'm going to download. So that's relative to my weather route. Um, and you'll see I've, if I zoom in a bit more, you can probably see that a bit more clearly. So this is where I'm going to get my grib forecast from. When I come over here to my download settings, um, and so I can see here I've got my GMDSS text and I've got that ticked on and I've got the GMDSS graphical forecast so the text is only going to 
um, be for the area, the Met area I'm in, the graphical is going to be for the whole world. So that's where I um, download that data. Uh, and then I come over here and I click, uh, yeah, click next and I can have my other parameters. I can turn on my um, ocean currents, AIS tracking, GPS tracking, uh, and then click on next. And then I download all these parameters. So you'll see here the GMDSS bulletins, and then I've got my GMDS graphical forecast. So if I, if I download that, that's my GMDSS graphical forecast. Normally we would just download uh, everything, but I can just do all of those if I wanted to. Um, yeah, so that's how we, that's how we get those. Um, and again, here in the offshore app is the only place that you can actually see these regions. So that you could, it doesn't. Um, we're we're on my we're looking at the in the offshore app on my Mac, but you could be on a um, a phone or um, a tablet, uh, so iOS or Android. And uh, these are the yeah, yeah these are all of our GMDSS areas. Go back over to my weather routing, and there's my graphical display. And um, yeah, same thing is yeah, turn them on and off in here. So I think that's, does that cover that, Kieran? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. That's perfect. Cool. All right. Well, we will wrap that up and um, 